Let me see how many. Yeah, we have 34 people online. And hopefully everybody's coming back. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah, Ashwin, you're online. Yes, yes, we can hear you. We have your slides on. And uh, oh, maybe we wait 30 seconds, you know. Sure. Uh, 33 people online. Okay, we have 33 people online, maybe 10 people short, but uh, do you want to start? I don't mind. Uh, you don't mind, right? Uh, hopefully, okay. if we need, we are in, I don't lose time on the presentation. Ah, it's, yeah, absolutely. Yes, okay. okay, so yeah, okay, let me introduce you. Ashwin Gopal, uh, you work with uh, Edgar and Stefano, Rofa, um, you work in Trieste, CISA, right? Uh, title of talk would be Power Minimization of Critical Oscillators in an Active Bath, 15 minutes. Maybe we allow time for questions because this kind of topic, uh, I, I sort of feel that there will be more questions on active matter today, okay? Sure, just a correction. I am uh, Please, yeah. uh, I just graduated my master's from Isa Pune in India, and I did this work on the Professor Edgar and uh, Professor Stefano uh, for my master thesis project. So uh, let me get straight into the model as there has been enough motivation for the active matter. Uh, just one thing that I want to add uh, regarding active matter is that uh, when you consider a bath uh, filled with active agents such as bacteria, uh, then these, these, uh, this bath acts as a non-equilibrium bath and it's, uh, it has properties and phenomenologies which are uh, not shown by a uh, colloidal particle in a thermal bath. So we'll be mainly focusing on the uh, motion of this oscillator in an active bath, but um, I'll also discuss the properties in the thermal bath to get an idea of the problem. So we will be using Langevin dynamics uh, for the system where the system is externally uh, dri uh, driven by a constant torque F and uh, it's on a nonlinear potential, periodic potential, um, and this model in, a, in the deterministic limit is called uh, an Adler oscillator. And in this case, we are uh, studying in the presence of a bath. Uh, the difference between uh, two baths, uh, the active and the thermal bath, is in the uh, correlation, two point correlation function for the bath statistics. And as we see, as we know, in the thermal bath case, uh, the system uh, has a direct delta correlation, whereas in the active bath, it has been shown experimentally that the system have an exponential correlation with time. So there is an extra parameter of tau, which is the correlation time uh, due to the collisions in the of, of the active agents on the passive particle. So um, one of the key things to identify here is that uh, when tau goes to zero, uh, the correlation time goes to zero, uh, we recover back the thermal bath limit, the uh, direct delta correlations. So the system becomes memoryless uh, in an effect. Whereas when you go to tau tends to infinity limit, as you can see, the amplitude of the noise uh, goes to zero and uh, it's infinitely correlated. So this, this corresponds to a deterministic limit. So this, in, uh, this model, uh, it is important to understand the bifurcation diagram and the goal of this uh, project was to understand the effect of fluctuations on uh, the thermal, uh, thermodynamic quantities near the bifurcation. So this system, uh, this nonlinear system uh, has a saddle node bifurcation where uh, when the external torque, strength of the external torque is less than the uh, strength of the potential K, the system goes to an equilibrium fixed point, a stable fixed point. Whereas when F is greater than K, the system just keeps on oscillating. As you can see, the system is also uh, an example of uh, dynamics in a washboard potential, where uh, when F is less than K, the system can uh, equilibrate to a fixed point. Whereas when F is greater than K, it just keeps on uh, rolling. So uh, this model uh, has a wide variety of applications. Uh, this is the simplest model for uh, Brownian motors, which are key for intracellular transport. And uh, in another biological example, these are uh, models used to study phase locking in the hair bundles, uh, where um, 
the system uh, where the hair cells are used to amplify the uh, in incoming signals in the ear. And uh, from a physical uh, electronic perspective, there are uh, circuit elements uh, called Josephson junctions under constant bias. Uh, these are the models used to study and uh, uh, also for the applications of phase locked loops. Uh, now, since we are going to study the thermodynamic quantities, um, here we will be using the tools of stochastic thermodynamics so that we uh, we'll, we can get the thermodynamic quantities at the mesoscopic scale. So these are uh, all these thermodynamic quantities are random variables and uh, depends on the individual trajectories. So we'll be using the Sekimoto's definition given here for defining heat and work. First, uh, since we are, the tau tends to zero limit goes to the thermal bath limit, I'll discuss the uh, results that we derived and uh, the features in the thermal bath. So as you can see in the figure, we, uh, you know, we derived an exact expression for the average power inputted into the system. So uh, with increasing, even though the noise is a Gaussian symmetric noise, uh, due to the presence, presence of the external uh, torque, the system uh, has a constant current and um, and the constant current increases with increasing temperature or increasing uh, diffusion coefficient, as you can see. And uh, well, one, we also derived the fact that um, at the bifurcation point, the average power has also a scaling behavior given by uh, the average power proportion to temperature power. Now, uh, we also looked at the uh, variance of the work input into the system in the steady state. So in the steady state, what we see is that uh, the, for small temperatures, we clearly see the signatures of uh, the bifurcation behavior uh, in the variance. So there are these uh, peaks that appear in the variance. Um, and uh, these peaks uh, corresponds to the sum of two variances that are governed below and above the bifurcation. As, as, you, uh, as you guess, uh, the uh, below bifurcation, the system is just diffusing around an equilibrium point. So the uh, variance is just governed by the diffusion provision. Whereas above the bifurcation, the system is oscillating uh, along with the uh, diffusion. So these are uh, governed by all the parameters in the system. So these two different variances uh, account for a peak in the um, near the bifurcation for the variance. And as you can see, the analytical uh, results uh, match really well with the uh, simulations, tangent simulations. Now, uh, now we want now the main part of the project was to understand what happens in the presence of a non-equilibrium bath, uh, especially in an active bath. So. So the activity is mainly governed by the parameter, uh, the correlation time. And uh, as I explained from uh, tau uh, equal to zero, it corresponds to the thermal bath limit and tau tends to infinity corresponds to the um, deterministic limit. And as you can see here uh, on, the, on the average power, uh, what you see is uh, expected. And you see that as you increase uh, tau from zero to infinity, you go from the uh, finite uh, power uh, curve analytical curve for the thermal bath limit. And with increasing tau, you effectively go from a uh, thermal to a deterministic bath limit. Whereas uh, the key point is that uh, it's not just uh, similar to decreasing the uh, strength of the uh, noise in the thermal bath limit. And uh, this is what uh, I'll discuss. And there are different phenomenologies above, below, and above the bifurcation point. But sorry, uh, what's, the, so what's the D parameter here? D is the uh, strength of the noise, or uh, usually uh, it's the bare diffusion coefficient of the colloidal particle in the bath. Okay, you know, um, in the uh, figure that you have shown that the active bath, you yeah. fix the D, I guess, that's right? It's just constant D, and uh, we are varying uh, uh, just the correlation. Now. So it, it corresponds to uh, the blue curve here, uh, the blue curve here in the thermal bath limit. And uh, now we are changing the correlation times. So as, as we expect, the average power should decrease to the uh, deterministic limit. OK, thanks. Yeah. So uh, as, as in the previous case where uh, the variance show significant uh, peaks uh, near the uh, bifurcation point, here also uh, the peaks appear. But the key thing uh, to understand here is that with the increase in the uh, activity of the path, the uh, the peaks also get enhanced. So the variance in the work also get enhanced at the bifurcation point. So next, uh, to understand this better, uh, uh, there are these quantities called Fano factor, which is the relative uncertainty uh, for a random variable in the system. So the Fano factor for the work 
uh, clearly shows his behavior. So the uh, at the bifurcation point, uh, the the system shows a peak in the uh, Fano factor. So uh, it's it's uh, always safe to stay away from the bifurcation point for a precise input of power. And there are these uh, inequalities, uh, the fundamental bounds uh, for uh, uh, stochastic thermodynamics called the thermodynamic uncertainty relations. These quantify uh, how how the dissipation in the system uh, is related uh, is uh, related to the precision uh, for uh, for an input of a uh, steady state current. So in this case, uh, we derived an exact uh, uh, lower bound uh, for the uh, the Fano factor, uh, which which in the case of tau tending to zero goes back to the thermal bath limit, which is two kBT, and uh, um, uh, in the in the case of active bath, we find that uh, far from equilibrium, the uh, the the bound can be lowered. The lower bound can be much lower than the uh, thermal bath bound, and also it is a finite. It's a time dependent bound. It depends on the ratio of t by tau. As you can see, with increasing tau for fixed uh, fixed t in the steady state, the the lower bound is uh, much lower than two in this case. Now, uh, I should, I should add a question for you. Sure. So, in, in, in these, uh, uh, in the right panel where you have these circles, diamonds, and squares, these are from numerical simulation? Yeah, yeah. So, in the case of active bar, uh, uh -huh. these, uh, uh, these curves correspond to the numerical results. Whereas, yeah. uh, uh, we have, uh, I'll explain this that uh, the analytical okay. study. Uh, do you, yeah. do, you, do you have to do like do you have to do multiple like realizations over many initial conditions to get these uh, non to yes. converge these non equilibrium? You do okay, okay. Yeah, so we reach the we reach the steady state uh, with uh, around ten power five trajectories, and then these okay. are the statistics. Those. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, so uh, now the key result of the key phenomenology and the key results of this project was uh, to identify that. Um, Above bifurcation point, the system has a uh, the power input into the system can be minimized at a finite correlation time. So, as expected, below the bifurcation point, increasing the correlation time means that you go from the thermal bath limit to the deterministic limit. So, below the bifurcation point, uh, the average power is zero. So, it, it it's it's effectively increasing the correlation time is effectively effectively like cooling the system, whereas Above the bifurcation point, you see that it's just not the uh, decreasing power uh, behavior. You see that uh, the power decreases and it goes below the uh, value average, average power in the deterministic limit, and uh, and it, it is minimum at a finite correlation time, and it it increases back. I, to the, I should, I should, sorry, I had another question for you. Just it's a it's a really stupid question, but uh, the um, would it, is it correct to say that the the integral of this thing on the right is the free energy, or no? So, uh, in this case, uh, we are just considering a single oscillator. Okay. So, it's, uh, um, so uh, you, you have to define a non-equilibrium free energy in this case. Uh -huh. no, so, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering if there's any connection between that no, and... Uh, it's, no. it's, uh, okay. The point for a uh, for an, um, thermal bath case, uh, the free energy has contribution from the entropy. Okay. Uh, so in the case of uh, in the case of um, uh, active bath, uh, the power uh, is not uh, easily. Um, so in the thermal bath case, uh, let me explain it better. The average power is related to the average average uh, heat dissipated. So in that case, mm -hmm. you can directly relate it to the entropy production. Okay. Whereas in the case of active bath, you have non-Markovian effects. So the active bath constantly produces uh, entropy. In itself, because it's a non-equilibrium non -equilibrium path. Also, the motion of the colloidal particles also generates some um, entropy. So it's uh, so mathematically, it's not easy to uh, distinguish, uh, easy to identify the uh, dissipation term in the um, uh, entropy production. So my answer is no. Ashwin, we are at uh, minute uh, twelve thirty. We have less than three minutes overall. Oh, okay. So, um, I, I'll try to wrap up first. So this is the key result that uh, we are we are showing, uh, and uh, we will hope uh, for experiments to um, uh, uh, prove this. Next, uh, so all these uh, earlier results were um, uh, numerical results, and we wanted to get an idea whether uh, these decreasing and increasing behavior can be captured by analytical results. But the problem is that 
the exact master equation for this equation has uh, this uh, diffusive term which does not which has infinite terms if you expand expand the integral it does not converge to a single term so one has to go to markovian approximations for this non markovian problem to uh, get a sense of uh, uh, average power in an analytical form so uh, we studied uh, two of the known approximations for low correlation time uh, approximations fox and ucna and uh, we also derived another approximation uh, at the last uh, limit where we derived an exact expression for the average power so here are the results so uh, we found that ucna does not capture the behavior uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, problem whereas fox approximations uh, works for a particular range of correlation time and i want you to focus in this figure where i have plotted uh, the analytical curves from the fox for the phase distribution and the numerical uh, uh, results for the uh, phase distribution as you can see the for a low correlation time where uh, the fox approximation works the angular velocity distribution is close to gaussian whereas when the angular velocity distribution uh, is deviated from gaussian the phase distribution predicted by the fox does not work so this this is this is due to the fact that the complete picture for the system is given by the joint distribution of phase and angular velocity so uh, also one can see that uh, our large tau approximation uh, uh, clearly captures this increasing behavior in the system now uh, just to generalize this uh, uh, system we tried uh, numerically with uh, different potential with a uh, square wave driving triangular wave and also the adler uh, driving and we find that uh, the uh, the phenomenology of the power minimization is found in all these three kind of potentials so uh, our uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, the uh, the recipe for this power optimum uh, power minimization is uh, non linear periodic potential external driving and actor work so to conclude um, we you know we find that the statistics of this thermodynamic quantities are sensitive near the bifurcation point and uh, the power can be optimized to a minimum minimum value at a finite correlation time above the bifurcation point also the ingredients for such a power minimization are non non linear periodic potential external driving and an actor work we hope to collaborate with uh, uh, experimentalists to study this uh, field uh, this behavior and uh, i'm open for questions thank you thank you very much uh, for the very nice talk and we had the questions throughout the talk therefore we proceed with the next uh, uh, presentation uh, that is on continuum modeling of electrophoresis and uh, zeta potential of air bubbles in pure water by our baban pakwifard again from our institute uh, she is doing jointly with me and uh, Ali Hassan Ali at ICTP. Arham, are you online? Everything is okay with your presentation? Mm, yes. Uh, okay, 